Okay, my friends, so today is car wash day. It's the turn of the loop of GTI to get a maintenance wash. So I thought I would come take you along and show you uh, my maintenance wash procedure, the products I use, the processes, the why, um, we can we use them, and hopefully catch a bit of an in-between, a discussion on the products, a discussion on life, I don't know. Um, whatever comes to mind at the right time will get spoken about. So come on, let's go. Okay, so we're about to fill the buckets. I like to do these first. Some people like to say foam the car and then while the foam is dwelling, come and do this. Personally me, I like to get everything prepped. The only reason is if you are, let's say, washing on an overcast day and then as you foam it, the sun peeks out and obviously, I mean, the door's only here for me so I'll be able to see it, but still, I don't want to rush and then start, you know, doing kind of rinsing work or anything like that. At least then, everything is ready and I can just start moving consecutively through the steps without taking a pause, filling it, you know, all that type of stuff. So, we've got the rinse bucket, we've got the wash bucket, both right now empty. So in here, you're gonna fill it all the way up to um, pretty much uh, the brim. And in here, I've got my dry V2 small wash pad. The reason I put it in here as I fill, it just lets the fibers absorb all the water. It's done all that work already there rather than dipping it in here and kind of it not absorbing fully, etc. So that's just my kind of rationale behind it. So as I fill behind here in this bucket, it's gonna obviously absorb the water, I'm gonna fill to the top, perfect. And in here, obviously we're gonna fill to three quarters, so around here, and of course, wash. I put the wash in last because if I was to put the wash in right now, like this, the, the pressure and the height of the water is gonna hit the bottom, it's gonna create a head, so you're gonna have about this much water, the rest of it head, and you're washing your cold bubbles. Makes no sense. Um, if you do it last, like I recommend, at least then the water will be totally flat. And then when you put your, your gun and lance kit in and actually agitate the whole solution, you're gonna have that perfect consistency of you know foam, uh, the wash, the water, everything. So that's the way to do it. So again, let's get it nice and medium warm. So again, you know, I'm not holding a hose. I'm not kind of, kind of, I don't have to monitor the process. I just turn it on and yeah, everything's through quick disconnect, going all the way. Obviously everything's stainless. Even the plugs on the actual, um, on the hose end is all stainless. So it's quite a cool little system. So obviously I'm just sat here watching I find it quite therapeutic, but if you've got a cup of coffee somewhere and you just wanna have a drink as it's filling, it's just, it's just beautiful. But basically what you're gonna see is there's the V2 wash pad and it's just absorbed all the water. It's kind of given it that uh, breaking period. And I, I always find when you wash the first, the first pass with a dry wash pad is not always the best in the shampoo. So this way it will be the best from the get-go because it's already wet and it's already saturated. So then you take this out, put this in. So as I said, it's gonna be three quarters. Um, you don't fill it all the way to the top or leave yourself this much because when you agitate, it's gonna go everywhere. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it's not a problem, but why make a mess when you don't have to make a mess? So three quarters is just right and it just allows you to top up. Obviously, if you've got a high flow pressure washer like we have, um, you're actually getting 10 liters a minute. So there's a lot of water coming into the bucket anyway. So you get the chance to fill it right up to the top. There we are. All right, so bucket's filled again, as always. Shake every single product you have. Put in an okay amount. Boom. That'll do you. Let's go into the next step. So as you all know, I like looking after my kit. And this, of course, is just another kind of realm in, in the terms of looking after your kit. Now, I like to do what I call preventative maintenance. You are trying to prevent as much maintenance for as late as possible as you can. So that, what that basically means in layman terms is look after your kit. So 
What I personally like to do, and I do this every wash, now you don't have to technically, it's not like the machine's going to explode, but the, the life of the pump will get extended a lot longer, potentially, this is all potential, because nobody's really done a 15, 20 year test on or off. So I like to run the line, this, in, in this instance, this is my line, so my hose, and I like to run it off pressure, and that's just to get any kind of air out of the um, hose, if there is, so at least then when you do turn it on here, you're not pushing potential air pockets at high PSI and high flow rate. So again, just very simple, I just unlock, I don't unwind it all the way. The gun and lance we can leave for now. So again, I just like to hook it up. Here's the water cutoff switch. And then what I do is for about 10 seconds, I will literally just run the water. And you'll hear if there's air in the line. So I'm just gonna fire it. Usually if there's air in the line, you'll hear a psh, 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 like this. My sounds are getting better. <laughs> um, but look, there's no air, there's no splurting. Fantastic, there's no air in the line. I'm gonna obviously unwind this off pressure because again, it's easier. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna turn this on and we're in business. So technically, I am ready to do a wash. As you can see, this is in my line. I'm good to go. Obviously, the wheel bucket's the first in the firing line. And then what I like to do is as soon as I'm finished, I then go and put this back. I've got a storage for all these three. It's just easier for me, as you can see, I now do not have to think, am I going to need to fill? Am I not going to need to fill? It's all good to go. All I need to do is agitate the wash bucket, but there we go. So there's the wheel foam in our uh, PF22.2 foam cannon. I'm not going to be running wheels because it's again, probably a three, three and a half days ago was the last wash. And of course, I'm still going to load up the um, undress underneath the wheel foam. So. Let's go and get ourselves a very, very good maintenance wash. Okay, so as you all know, this is the highest maintained GTI in the world. Probably by quite a big mile. So what we're doing here is we're just keeping on top of it. So this is why I said, I'm not gonna use wheels because about three, four days ago, um, weather was like this and then it chucked it down for a couple of days and now weather's like this again. So. I'm just keeping it as fresh as possible, as much as I can. So in this case, that's where we're gonna utilize the wheel foam, but the prep stage has never changed. So just a good thorough rinse. I'll still load up the undress. That never changes. There we go, that's what you get from a 200 mil to 800 mil dilution, it's unbelievable. Again, this changes per car, but I like to get the large wheel woolly. It's not gonna fit in the front because of the brakes, but I like to get the large wheel woolly into the arch. This is my arch agitation brush. My favorite, the wheel mitt. So even though the, uh, the car is in immaculate condition, technically, dirty but immaculate, it's still pulling a little bit of, of browning off the tires, which is a good sign. And I've probably upset my little friend Clayton saying I've got the highest maintained Lupo in the world because he seems to think his is. He may have a fast one, but the verdict is still out of whether he has the cleanest. <laughs> so when you watch this Clayton, just know that it's all good fun. <laughs> so again, the wheel mate's just super quick. I can do the faces, the spokes, the back of the spokes, the bead of the wheel here, boom. Now, if you are utilizing wheel foam on your maintenances, because I know there's there's people who will do, let's say, 
as many washes as I do on a on the same vehicle, let's say. Some will do kind of an in-between, so they'll do one wash that is the full trio, so wheels, undress, wheel foam. And on the next wash, imagine if it's, it's as short as this one, exactly just copying me and the process which I advise, they'll then just use the undress and the wheel foam. Which to be fair is not a bad tactic. And just have a look at how hydrophobic the rubber is. So my process is always evolving. I always look at how can I get, let's say faster in a safe way when we're not trying to rush here, but how can I get, you know, effectively or functionally faster whilst not skimping on any of the kind of proper details. And then how can I utilize, let's say, more of one product, less of say multiples, or if multiples are needed, you know, I'm, I'm always testing now because I wash cars or our cars so often, I get to always test my own process and see if it's working or not. The key to a maintenance wash, as you can see, I'm not in any way putting any pressure or say take a tie brush for which the process I'm doing now and just go, I'm going to get this tie, you know, that's not enjoyable and you should not be doing that. And if you are doing it, fortunately, you're not doing it fully correctly. So you've got the best products on the wheel right now and the tire. All you want to be doing is getting the best tools and you just want to be agitating them, you know, like this. You don't want to be finishing your many maintenance washers feeling like you've just come from the gym. So just move the product around, let the product in the tool. It's, it's an old adage, let the products do the work. And in this case, it couldn't be true. Just let them, you know, penetrate, react, whichever product you may be using and you'll just have a really nice experience. I have filmed, you know, tens and tens of videos on exhaust care, but as you can see, I'm in my wheel maintenance regimen kind of step right now. So instead of doing four corners, do the fifth corner, which is your exhaust, and it couldn't even be simpler. So now that we're only using wheel foam, so if I've, if I've got wheels, I'll just spray it on. But the fact that we've got wheel foam here, it's even easier. Again quick rinse, a quick blast. There we are. As that's starting to react with the dirt and the grease, again, you're just moving the product around. There, look at that, wheel wood is going straight in and that's quite a small exhaust so just there's no signs behind this now in all my exhausts I like to use the wheel mud method as well because you can get your hand all the way in I can get it deep And this way, you will need to polish your exhausts once in your life and your weekly maintenance will take care to get them back to obviously shiny metal. And you don't have to be doing, you know, a lot of people are doing exhaust polishing every two weeks. Well, you're doing something wrong at that point. Just maintenance is key. I wish all wheels had big brakes, but even bigger clearance in the wheels, no matter what model of car you've got, because this large wheel woolly, if I could, I'd use it for all the processors. It just fits, it's got the larger surface area. You can't really complain. But unfortunately, the world is not that simple anymore. Small car, small brakes, big car, big brakes, no clearance. I'd love to hear everybody's opinion on wheel foam. How are you guys enjoying it so far? It's beautiful, right? Just 
too easy and too good. See, I call it another one of our process accelerators. It could be used as a, as a stepped system. You can use it independently if your car's a trailer queen. You then add, you know, undress underneath it if you're actually driving the car and there's kind of grease and stuff on the road. Or you could give it the full treatment with the wheels and dress wheel foam. But that's the thing, it's, it's so versatile. It can do normal steel brakes. It can do carbon ceramics. Now, a lot of people don't actually know the story, but when we started developing it, that's when we kind of already knew we were probably a year out from the 911 GTS. And obviously, carbon ceramics now we thought right we need to make a product that can be both compatible with our new carbon ceramic setup like a full you know Porsche do you know front and rear carbon ceramics high end so it had to be compatible with that had to be strong enough yet gentle enough you know yet safe enough again a few kind of prerequisites there that we could use it on the 911, but then it has to be strong enough, safe enough, you know, and usable enough to be able to play together with multiple products underneath it. And there was born the wheel foam. So that's the, uh, that's the true story of why we developed a product like that. It was, of course, like with every product, it's initially first designed for us, for one of our applications, whatever that may be at the time. And now people are enjoying the spoils of what it can bring to the table. But if you've ever felt just how slick it is, if you get it on your gloves and just do this, it's an unbelievably slick product especially when you're moving around with the wheel and stuff, you get it all over your hands. Now that's partly due to the alkalinity, but also the wetting agents that actually keep the foam on the wheel for as long as they do. And this is why I've always said, you know, it's actually, if you put it head to head with anything else, it's the longest dwelling foam in the world for the wheels. Now there's a reason for that, obviously there's, I've said this millions of times already, when you are having reactive products underneath, you want to keep them as wet as possible so the reaction almost never stops and it, and it doesn't, you know. Or if you don't have um, the ability to use the wheels, let's say with our carbon ceramics, Obviously, there's no reaction in that way happening, but there is a reaction. This is where the surfactants and the alkaline kind of cleaners come in and they actually continue to react 24, well, not 24 seven, but for as long as the wheel foam's on, it's constantly breaking down. Nothing actually dissolves anything. It, well, with the wheel foam, I can only speak really, it doesn't dissolve anything. You put it on and boom, it's gone. It actually loosens it enough to where you don't have to, like I said on the previous wheel, come in and scrub like a madman, all you've got to do is agitate it from the surface and um, it'll be gone. So it's a really neat formulation. All right, so the first part of the maintenance wash, my most enjoyable, which is the wheels. I love doing the wheels. Um, now that's come to an end. Um, as you can see, I've got a little bit of overspray on the car. This is exactly why you do the wheels first. If you get overspray, you get a little bit of foam, whatever product you're using, it, it doesn't matter because you're going to give the car now 47 rinses. So that's why wheels are always first. Um, I will see you all on the next episode where we continue talking about the pre-wash and the contact wash stages. I'll see you guys soon.